Well, appear into the future, and one has to look into the past. That's really how a lot of times people are basing general silver forecast on. But I actually want to go into a little more about some things in the past because the reality situation is the higher silver goes, are the more we can count on it going higher, the more civil strife and social unrust we're going to have. If you know, actually, I'd rather have it a happy medium. My personally, I'd rather have it silver just goes up a lot. All the other prices stay the same, and everything's just happy, hunky dory, fine. But you know, in a reality situation, we know it's not going to come out that way at all. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I could state that. I think, you know, if silver goes up, well, the thing is, if silver goes up to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars an ounce, obviously that means the government is near total collapse. It's never going to totally collapse, but there's going to be near a debt default, and the dollar is going to be greatly diminished in value if silver goes up that much. But at the same time, that's also going to mean that food is going to go up that much, oil is going to go up that much, and everything else. Now, this is not going to happen, obviously, between now and the election. No doubt about it, because they want to keep Hillary looking as good as possible. You can see what's going on in major media. But I also want to revisit an older time. And, you know, I think about this a little bit more because I've been researching my family lineage. And actually, I was surprised. I didn't realize I'd go all the way back to the Revolutionary War. Um, it's amazing how people survived those times. But it's amazing also the type of risk these people must have been taking. You know, hindsight is 2020 when you're looking back. But at that time, the future was very uncertain. And if they fought for the Confederacy, they would have been the bad guys, which some of my family voted, fought for the Confederacy. But since they lost, and since the Confederacy didn't take root, um, you know, today they're being disparaged, even though it's unjustly being said. Now, at the time of 1776, I had family in there, too. Um... One in Captain Wise's Rangers. He was a ranger in Captain Wise's Rangers. His son signed up when he was 16 years old. The father and son together um, fought against the British at the uh, siege and fall of Charleston, South Carolina. And also had a grandfather that was in, uh, um, he was a captain in Francis Marion's brigade, the Swamp Fox in South Carolina. They call him the Swamp Fox because he eluded uh, the British so well. And continuing on, the War of 1812, family member continuing on, three direct relatives into the Confederacy. And actually into modern times, World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, the whole thing. Um, but you know, when I think of these times, it's like, it seems like it's so laid out for people now that we look back and it's dates and places in the history book. But at those times, everything was uncertain. And I think, you know, today, like we're sitting high on a horse and we're looking back, everything is 2020. But now, you know, if we look, really, we got to look and peer into history and realize what uncertain times they were. And I think that's what's coming up down the future. Um, you know, people are sitting on their ass and kind of thinking, oh, wow, we're going to just make a lot of money on silver. But if you make a lot of money on silver, other things are going to be high in, in in price, in other words, food and energy costs, but on top of that, it's going to be tumultuous times. There's going to be bandits running around everywhere. It's going to be, it's not going to be a safe place to live if, if silver goes up to the astronomical levels that some people think. That's why sometimes I get a little miffed at the people in the ties and the suits talking about silver, whereas you should be armed to the teeth and um, know how to survive on your own more than being worried about uh, what the graphs say because if the reality of the situation is if the silver goes up that damn high, you're not going to be sitting high on a horse. You're going to be more like uh, pedaling the uh, moped bicycle next to the Volkswagen trying to squeeze out every last dime of your money. <laughs> That's what the reality of the situation is. Now looking at what's been going on in the uh, markets, I know the GDP has been taking a bad turn. Um, on the second quarter of 2016, again, after the first quarter looked dismal. Now, the other thing is, since the oil prices have been going up slightly, I know they've been going down recently, and I do not think oil is going to go up that high, and I don't think the markets are going to crash between now and November elections. Why? 
it's a it's a damn given. You know why I noticed that you don't need to be analyzing charts and graphs. They want Hillary Clinton in office. And if they crash the markets down or if they make the oil prices go up real high right now, she'll doesn't even she doesn't have a chance as I think as it is as it is without cheating. But if they make the economy bad now, obviously it's it's like it's just even more less chance he's got. So they're not gonna do that. They're not going to do that, even if it's beyond their control or anything. But, uh, you know, I just want to remember that, uh, you know, we today are almost like the American Native Indians who lived on, um, had a way of life. And there was another force that came in here and tried to put their way of life on the American Native Indians. It's sort of like we, the patriots, that created America like my lineage goes right back to, I, I was I didn't know all this stuff I mean I always felt I was a very strong patriotic person I know my father was he was an MP in the military during the Korean War and also during the uh, occupation of Germany after World War II um, very strong patriot but I realized that uh, you know the, the thing is it's it's like we the people that are patriots for the Bill of Rights and what the American, you know, foundations really are about. It's like today we are like what the American Native Indians were of old. We're being attacked. We're being attacked by greater, darker forces. Now, I know one thing that really happened with the American Native Indians, and most of them really didn't uh, succumb to uh, the bullets of the forces against them. It was mainly death by disease and you know it's something else we got to watch out for and it and that's another reason you should have silver because that colloidal silver can do you a hell of a lot of good in a situation where you're sick as a matter of fact most of your immune system is in your in your is in your gut so when you're drinking colloidal silver it's destroying the bad microbes in your gut and it's not harming the, the good microbes in your gut that are beneficial because most of your immune system is in your gut that's why when you drink colloidal silver, it can do you quite a bit of good. But, you know, it's like if everybody even had bought one ounce in the United States, the price right there would go up astronomically, but also the health benefits would go up even more so. But nobody seems to be aware. It's like marketing is everything. People won't buy an ounce of silver, but to go out and buy a pack of cigarettes like nothing, you know, or some few packs of cigarettes, no problem, right? But, uh, you know, we have our... Um, or, or whatever you want to call it, her priorities all upside down. So, and you know, I want to actually talk about something else. I want to bring. I was almost going to bring this up on a sec, separate video, but you know, it's something else. I'm kind of diverging on a tangent here, and I know I do this quite often, but it, it is a little bit boring just to talk about silver only sometimes. But uh, you know, it's speaking about the American Native Indians. This was actually this red outlined area, taking apart most of, taking, taking, encompassing most of Western Texas. Uh, o present day Oklahoma, good portion of Kansas, and uh, New Mexico, part of New Mexico. This was known as Comancheria. Um, this was an area that actually was a nation owned by the Comanche, actually the most warlike tribe of all the American native peoples um, ever. Um, you know, it's almost ludicrous that Mexico claimed this as their territory and they said they sold it to us. Actually, the reality of the situation is Mexico invited the European settlers in there because Mexico couldn't deal with the Comanches, the Apaches, and the Kiowa, and they wanted some kind of buffer. That's how we got in there, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, if the American people ever need to make right on a people, it's not Mexico. It's not going to be Mexico. It should be the Apache, the Kiowa, the Comanche, and other native tribes of that area. That's who this land belongs to, not Mexico. You know, and sometimes, you know, people are not, maybe that's politically incorrect, but I just want to make that point on this, even though that's a tangent comment on a silver video, I just want to make that point because, uh, you know, the damn, uh, sometimes when I look at things that are going on with the New World Order and the way they're talking about the way they want to structure the world, well, you know what, if the world's going to be restructured, let's restructure it back to the way the Native American peoples had it. Let's leave the United Nations out of it. I think this is one time the white European needs to get together with the American natives and fight the New World Order together for the same cause. 
Now, I don't think I have even one drop of Native American blood in me, but I, I'll state that, you know, somehow I see the 1776 cause, the cause of the Confederacy, and the cause of the American Native peoples all being linked. And, you know, sometimes I look at that and I say to myself, there's been a lot of injustices done. You know, today, some of the biggest injustices we got going on is in the financial markets, because quite obviously, if people took delivery on silver, you know, what would happen to the price the comics would be busted. But they don't take delivery, because obviously, there's some kind of plot involved that people on the top probably know which way the direction of the money, which way the price is going, and they're partaking in the, partake, uh, in the paper markets and profiting by that. That's why one should not really partake in the paper markets, except maybe investing in, like, PSLV, where you got a piece of paper backed by real silver, but as far as like buying options, it's pretty much not a, not the thing to do. Now I just want to show you. I just showed this picture here of moccasins here because uh, back in the day, the American Native Indians used to talk of it as uh, when you go to war, making moccasins, because when you went to war, you usually would need a few pairs of moccasins because of uh, all the foot travel you would do. But you know that's to say that. You know, if you go to war, and you know, that's the thing, we're up against, we're actually in a battle. We're in a battle against great forces that are great evils. And it's not a matter of shiny silver coins are going to save us. It's like you're going to have to do things like making moccasins. You need to have all the other essentials that you need for daily life. Silver coins are not going to save you in, in its entirety. Um... Now, obviously, things are being shown life lately in uh, silver. It's quite obvious that if you bought silver at $15 or $14, now that it's $20, it's looking pretty damn good. But, you know, another up-and-coming star, and I, I almost hate to say this because every time you op open my mouth about anything, it's almost like, you know, well, it tends to be that you talk about something when it's gone higher, and then you know, usually after it's gone higher, that means it has a little... Means there might be more of a correction, but we noticed that uh, palladium has been doing well lately too. Palladium, but you know the real reason—the real reason I could state that the metals have a lot more to go upward movement—is because not only the gold-silver ratio is skewed way off. Gold-silver ratio should be—I mean, at a minimum, it should be, you know, 50 to 50 to one, not where it is today. I mean, really, it should be maybe 15 or 20 to one, but. It, even 50 to 1 would bring the silver price way to hell up. But the other thing is the platinum to gold ratio is way off. As a matter of fact, the average platinum to gold ratio is 1.4 to 1. So in other words, gold being at 1350, um, you might say platinum should be about, I don't know, 1800, 1850 around there. But actually during normal, that's an average 1.4 to 1. But during normal industrial times, platinum is normally double that at the price of gold. Now here you're seeing platinum right now as we speak at 1150 and gold at 1350. That's that's something wrong there. That means industrial output is greatly curtailed throughout the world. There's no doubt about it. Now palladium being that palladium is actually more rare than platinum by far and by some estimates more than 30 times more rare than gold and it's ne it's all pretty much consumed not too much of it is recycled and there's only really one main place it comes from Norilsk mine up in northern Siberia Russia I think that's 39 percent of the world's supply coming from there um, I think palladium actually has a lot of room to move upward but who the hell knows who the hell knows just like anything the paper markets are suppressing things I don't think it reflects reality at all but at one time Palladium moved up to three or four times or four times. I think it was four times the price of gold. That can easily put it up over $10,000. I can't believe that, though. I just can't believe that. You know, in the future, you know, if gold was several thousand dollars, palladium could be $10,000, but I don't know. But you never know. When things happen like that, they only happen for a brief, flighting moment. They don't happen like that and stay that way. Just like rhodidium stayed when it was over $10,000 at one time. Rhodidium is rhodidium is now at around six hundred dollars an ounce. But at one time it was ten thousand two hundred dollars. Why is that? I don't know. I mean I know there's various reasons for it, but 
obviously I know the markets are rigged, but you know I would not count on these things. I would actually play try to take the safe, stable route because over concentrating on the metals is is not a good thing. That is why I always advise not to put all your money into one area. As a matter of fact, you'd be better off trying devising or dividing up your even if you cannot even afford I mean, let me put it this way, if you can afford any silver, just get a few ounces for colloidal silver purposes. Not even for investment purposes, but for colloidal silver purposes. Get some of the Canadian milk maples, which are four nines. But as far as like what I think is gonna happen is all hell is gonna break loose after the elections. Nothing you're not gonna see much that's why I've been putting out too many updates. Because there's not going to be much between now and the elections. I'm sorry. I don't think so. I mentioned this in several other videos, but it's like 19 out of the last 22 election cycles uh, were predicted upon which way the markets went or how well the markets were doing about three months for the three months prior to the election. If the markets were doing poorly, the opposing party won. If the markets were doing well, the incumbent party stayed in. That was out of 19 out of 22 times. So that's out of the last 88 years. That's, that's predicted which way, uh, who would win. So, you know, we're living in modern times, right? You know, like old girls, here's on a chic 1970 motorcycle chopper with the high back. But it's a matter of, um, you know, it's rigged. It's electronic bullshit. It's really, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, give you some glossy terms about things and try to impress you with something because you know I'm, I, I'm beyond that I'm beyond that I mean there's a lot of cute words you could throw into something that makes people convince somebody of something but it's quite obvious that the markets are rigged there's web bots trading with each other left and right but they're not going to be able, they're not going to rig them beyond the elections I don't think you know even though I obviously know Trump is more or less a, a plugged in insider you know he is. I mean, you know, it's not going to be like the, it's not going to be the revolutionary coming in to freaking change everything in the world, but uh, definitely thousands, thousands of times better than Hillary Clinton, obviously. But they don't want to upset anything between now and the election. That's pretty much. I'm going to say that. You know, maybe I'm sticking my neck out on that, but I don't think they want to. And you know, and the only reason they would do that is that they would. If there was something collapse of the economies or some bullshit like that, um, <laughs> there's something crazy to happen. I don't know what. You know, a dirty nuke blows up in freaking Wall Street. You know, that would do it, right? Uh, I don't know. I mean, really, I don't know. I mean, what the hell? I mean, how do I know? I want to know if something like that's going to happen. When something like that happened between now and the election, they would cancel the election and postpone it, right? Now, that could be something. I don't know. Actually, that's why I think, you know, one of your best reasons is to invest in real stuff because um, there is going to be something like that in the future. I think most paper uh, investments are going to go out the window. Um, EMP, that's being allowed to happen. I mean, what else is new, right? I mean, how, how would you get out of this financial invest if you were, like, the people that are in charge of the Ponzi scheme? How would you get out of it? You would allow an EMP to happen? And then, or you would allow maybe a dirty nuke to blow up in the financial district of New York, which wouldn't actually kill everybody, you know, because it probably wouldn't be big enough, but it would make it radioactive enough to shut it down for like 100 years or more, right? I mean, it sounds crazy, but I mean, I'm sorry, man. I just think that the powers that be, the ones on the top, they got no limits on what they're going to do. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to go, they're going to, they're going to war against us. And, you know, we're like the old, uh, you know, us, the ones today that are the patriots, the ones that are for the true America, we're like the Native Americans of, of yore. Now you know what it, now you know what it feels like to be them. Because we're the ones being over persecuted by overwhelming odds, and we think we got we can beat them, but I don't know if we can. To tell you the truth, I don't know if we can. But I think the only thing that can actually get us on the righteous side of God, or maybe. Let's not even say God. Let's call it the Great Spirit, okay? Let's call him the Great Spirit. Get us on the right side, your side of the Great Spirit. Is that we have to make right and join forces with the Native Americans that were in this country before us to fight the freaking New World Order. That's why I brought up that point about, you know, the land that was in Western United States belonging to Mexico. 
it, it never really did. It never did. They never belonged to Mexico, man. And they just drew it. They said, let well, us come on. Come on, Cherry is Mexico, and Apache land is in Mexico, and the area that Kiowa owned is Mexico. No, no, no. It would all belong to the Native Americans. You know, really, we got to make right with them, not Mexico. So, Mexico is something else. It's, they could do whatever they want over there. So, but, uh, you know, the world is not really different than what it was in 1776 at all. Not in the least. Uh, it's like everybody's trying to get away from all the bullshit. That's what happened when people went to the New World. And then when the New World started getting too crowded and complex in the East, they started going West. Till we ran out of land. <laughs> to, or till we stole the land from the American natives. And there was no longer land to steal. And what happened? Then the bullshit laws start coming in and, and closing us in. And then, of course, the South revolted over this. And what happened? That lost, and then the New World Order won. The New Union. So, again, you know, for those that complain about this, what I, the way I'm going on the silver update here, but I'm really telling you something that's beyond the numbers. Because you always got to look beyond the numbers. Obviously, silver's on a bull run. It's not going to be straight up and down. It's going to play out almost exactly like it played out the last time. It might take a couple years, and when it starts going hyperbolic, you know it's getting dangerous. And of course, that's with the time everybody's going to be saying, buy it at any cost, and you can't lose, and it's going to go to the freaking moon, and and then, you know, it, it might go hyperbolic farther than you think, but the more hyperbolic it goes, the more social calamity we're going to be having, because there's a flip side to everything. Um, actually, don't wish it to go hyperbolic and have social calamity. I'd rather have it go hyperbolic without cyber social calamity, but that will not happen. It won't go that damn hyperbolic without social calamity. If there's a collapse in the dollar, yeah, silver will go way to hell up. And then, of course, we'll have a collapse of society, and we'll have to protect ourselves and grow our own food and worry about where we get gas and energy and, and how do we you know, you know, survive in a day-to-day -day situation. It's going to be more than silver. That's why the people with the suits and ties kind of aggravate me about when they talk about silver. It's a lot more than that. So anyway, um, <laughs> probably would be good to get something like this moped that old girls has here, the little motorcycle. Uh, but let me say that, uh, or a horse. But let me say that, uh, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. There's always going to be people that look to freaking control other people. Scumbags like that. It's amazing that somebody didn't put Hillary Clinton in her place a long time ago. Or any of them, to tell you the truth. But you know, that tells me one thing about the government itself. I totally mistrust the government completely. Because the government just doesn't give a damn. And they just bay any type of rule there is as long as somebody's lying in their pocket. Which is telling me they're against the people. 110%, no matter what the hell they tell us. That's exactly what the deal is. Because if the government wasn't was for the people, um, they would be able to break some of the rules of like dismantle like a lot of the garbage that's going on in the top with the crookedness. You know, they'll not, they're not beyond them to do something crooked for the crooks, but it's not it, it's beyond them to do something crooked for and righteous that would help the people. See. So anyway, just hopefully, uh, just want to keep the faith with this garbage and. Uh, you know, silver is looking okay. It's not looking too bad. And like like I said, you don't want it to go up too, too fast. As a matter of fact, if it goes up too, too fast, I imagine it's going to go in for a crash again. But I don't think it's going to go up too, too fast for a couple years. We're going to be sitting on kind of like a bunch of blips for a while till it goes hyperbolic. And when it goes hyperbolic, that might be the time when we see the United States government having problems paying its bills due to debt default and at which time that's the end of the United States and you know I want to call attention again to that site deagle.com it's D-E-A-G-E-L not G-L-E uh, you can look on the uh, U.S. population forecast they, they might be wrong but they got some freaking pretty heinous predictions about U.S. population forecast due to exodus it may be true though because uh there might be literally many tens of millions of immigrants in this country that are being, you know, 
supported by U.S. government policies. And if the U.S. government can't support them, they'll be gone. There might be 50 million immigrants in this country or more. It'll just leave right there. And then the rest of the people, might, there might be tens of million that are associated or dependent upon the government. They'll be done. They might leave. There won't be too many people left. They might be going back to the ways, the old ways, the real old ways, the ways of the American natives. So, might be a time for making moccasins again. So anyway, um, kind of like a hodgepodge of an update, but you know, I don't like putting out the stuff that other people put out. Because there, you know, maybe this was a little bit of a, a, a Miller Connolly type thing when I put out here too, but um, you know, it's like when others put out some of these things, I I don't really like, you know, it's almost like yeah, the banks are are crooked, yeah, you know, somebody's, you know, they're doing cahoots with this one and or whatever, but it doesn't really mean anything to tell you the truth, because it's beyond the numbers. In the practical world. If silver goes up really super high, that means everything collapsed. If silver goes up astronomically high, that means the U.S. dollar collapsed. If the U.S. dollar collapses, well, it's going to be beyond signing silver coins that are going to save you. You're going to need a lot more than that. It's going to be food, fire, power, and fuel for number one, beans, bacon, and bullets, that type of stuff, not just silver. So keep that in perspective. And... I personally think, you know, I've been, I actually bet on palladium pretty good. I think palladium is going to do pretty well. And I know p I told people in the past that I bet on palladium. And I think it's going to do well. And I think I was talking about it when it was $900. But <laughs> you know what I made some people buy it at the time. And I was like, you know, I'm not telling you, a buy, I'm not giving people a buy signal. But even if you bought it at 900 bucks or something, you're still going to wind up being ahead. Because I think palladium is going to outstrip the price of gold eventually. And, uh, you know, I don't like telling anybody about buy signals on this garbage because anybody that tries to predict buy signals on silver, is just, that's the worst freaking thing to try to predict. God, you don't, want to dig, you don't want to mess around with buy signals on silver. Not in a million years. It, it's, it's, a, it's a hold investment for a rainy day. That's what the hell it is. And that rainy day is coming. So... You know, the Grim Reaper. <laughs> the Grim Reaper's coming, man. But just like those who ride motorcycles, we all take chances, right? Every time you get on that two-wheeled death demon, you take a chance, even though you know it's fun. You know you're out in a breeze. You know, you know it's a new experience. It's a new day. But it's just like any investment out there. You never know. You absolutely never know. That's why you don't bet all the cards. You don't bet the farm on one thing. You never do that. You spread your risk.